Hi, I'm Lee Fletcher. I've been fascinated by Serger Crochet ever since the first time I saw it, maybe seven or eight years ago. I've made Serger Crochet on three different brands of Sergers and had great success with it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the Serger Crochet. You can see how you get this fun ruffle and I have a little bit of metallic thread in there. We're going to explore how to do this today. The first thing I did was experiment with different weights of thread in order to get the exact look that I wanted. My first experiment was 30 weight cotton blendables in the needle and 30 weight with metallic thread in the upper looper and 12 weight cotton which is much heavier in the lower looper along with the metallic. It was way, way too heavy. Uh, I might have wanted to use that for a different look so now I have the sample of what that combination looks like but uh, the next thing I did was put 60 weight poly light in the needle with 30 weight cotton and the uh, metallic in both of the loopers. Obviously we're working with a three thread wide overlock in order to accomplish the lace. I really loved the look and the lightness of the lace with the 60 weight poly light and the 30 weight and the metallics together. Now I want to tell you what you're going to need for your project. Number one, you're going to need a fabric like water soluble stabilizer to run your first row of stitching around. Uh, so that you need that stabilizer to hold that first row together. Number two, I like the 60 weight machine the thread in the needle. It's very light. It gives the lace a light feel to it. I used 30 weight cottons in both of the loopers and I used metallic thread through both of the loopers. And also in order for that metallic thread to work uh, in your machine without any breakage or shredding or pooling or anything, you need two thread directors. These little items here are the thread directors. That enables the thread to come flat off the spool just like it went onto the spool. It will go into the machine flat and there will be no breakage during this process. You'll want to thread your machine with the looper threads uh, two threads going through the looper at the same time. Some sergers have a configuration where you can put a spool on the bottom and then put the thread director over the top and bring them both up together. This particular model has a wide um, a spool pin down here so a spool doesn't fit on there. But I can use uh, a thread tower and bring my thread up through here put it through the same threading path for the upper looper as if you were using one spool of thread. You can see I have the thread director with a cone of metallic thread on it for the upper looper. For the lower looper I just used the chain looper here. If you don't happen to have a chain looper you can do the same thing again use a, a tower. Um, but both threads again will go up through the machine the same way you would do it if you only had one spool of thread. Then this is, uh, we're threading for a three thread overlock wide and so I have um, the third spool for the needle and generally it would be overlock needle one. Um, so that's how you thread it from this part. To get started you have to have something to sew that first row of stitching onto. So I cut a piece of the fabric salvi about two inches wide and about an inch longer than the full width around the onesie. I then overlapped the ends, the short ends, about a half inch and put a pin in it so that as I'm stitching I can go around and see where my uh, start and finish is. You're going to sew that first row, this row right here, with the blade up. You're going to go all the way around until you come back to where you started. Then you're going to lower the blade 
and then you're going to angle off and come to the edge of where those loops are. You've got all these loops coming out. You can kind of see here where they are, what they are. And you're going to sew about in the middle of each of those loops as you go. The next seg segment will show you how to do that. This is how you're going to sew the edge of one row and then add another row. Notice that I have a straight pin here. I have that in there so that I know where the start of my second row is and I can tighten my stitch a little bit every about every third or fourth row or however often I want to to increase the fullness so the, the, the tighter the stitch is, the shorter the stitch is the more ruffling you're going to get. Now you can see I'm watching carefully where the loops are as they go under the foot so I can make sure that my needle is going to hit the edge of the loops. You need to real, really move slow during this process. If you miss, you're going to have a little hole in your work and it's much easier to go slow now than to try to go back and fix those. Just ask me how I know. Okay, when you get your ruffle all done, at the very last row, you're going to decrease the stitch length down to one. In other words, you're going to shorten that stitch length. You'll do one more row and the, the, the uh, length is going to be real tight and it'll put a scalloped edge on here. I don't know if you can see it here, but you're going to get a real tight row and it's going to have a nice scalloped edge on it. When you get that done, you have it all done. You're going to take the ends. At the, at the end, you want to stitch off and give yourself a long tail, and then you're going to work that tail back into your final row. At that point in time, go back and inspect your lace and see if you have any holes in it, which I did. And you're just going to take the 60 weight poly light with a thread and needle and go back and just whip stitch it all together. It'll look just great when it's all done, so don't worry too much about that. The next thing you're going to do is cut that stabilizer down to where uh, it's just you know along the edge of, of uh, your first row of stitching. Set your regular sewing machine up for a serpentine zigzag or a wide zigzag and stitch the onesie, stitch the lace right onto the onesie, okay? And then when you're all done, you can just wash that stabilizer away. This one, the stabilizer's still there, um, but it makes does two things. It keeps your onesie from stretching too much while you're sewing, and um, it gives you some extra stability to get that lace in there. I'm still thinking I might come back in and put some ballet slippers on this or you know maybe I'll put my uh, brand new baby granddaughter's name on it but I just love this project. You can actually see other pictures of this in Sulky's uh, Fun with Sulky Blendables and it's also you can find Join Friedrich's original directions on the Baby Like website under serger uh, projects. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you'll make it and I hope that you'll send us pictures.